See, there you are. Mary, Jason and Mary Jordan, they're going to continue our marriage uh, yeah. word. Um, yeah, give me a hand, please. I just want to just uh, kind of uh, just super awesome people. Also, I just wanted to let you know that their daughter was the one who gave the uh, such a legacy, and I'm so so honored that you would uh, share with us this morning and be part of this. So bless you. Bless you. Wow, it is awesome. So starting off. My name is Jason. This is my wife, my beautiful wife, Mary. Uh, we celebrated 30 years of marriage last month. So it's really cool. You know, God kind of has really good timing on everything, obviously. And, I, you know, oh, we're going to share on marriage. And I'm like, oh, no, sharing on marriage all in front of everybody? I mean, we've always done small groups. And uh, we've been doing the small groups for a few years. But uh, this is the thing. Uh, God always shows up. Uh, going into this, I wanted to take control of everything. I wanted to tell the, the worship team what to play. I did. I was going to call you. I wanted, I wanted everything a certain way. And it's really crazy because I'm not the pastor, right? But I just felt this like, this is how you make things right. But I'm here to tell you from the beginning of the day, of the start of this day, it does not matter, none of that matters because God orchestrated everything, yeah. okay? Um, and you're gonna see as the word comes forth uh, that he gave us that, oh my goodness, how could that all come together? But it all came together today. So um, we're just really blessed, we're glad to be here. And uh, it's awesome, right? And you all look great. <laughs> Um, we, just so you know that, you know, we don't come to you as a couple that just knows it all about marriage because we absolutely don't have a clue. And all of you know us, know that we don't have a clue. But there have been some uh, key people in our lives, um, two of which I wanted to thank because um, they're the, like, I want to say like the matriarch and patriarch of marriage of Desert Christian Center, and that would be Daryl and Jennifer Silverberg. Um, they have walked us through um, some very, very hard times. Um, and I'll tell you, if you've uh, been in, if you are in a marriage now, or if you have been in one in the past, there are hard times. Um, and where you're just thinking, this ain't gonna work. Uh-uh, this is not going to work. This is like, it. forget it, I'm out of here. I will have you know that I have said that and thought it and felt it. And my husband, the same thing. Um, but they, you know, they got us through some very difficult times with God. They pointed to God and they said, this is what God says. This is what God says. And so that's what we're doing here. We're doing what we've been taught. And, um, and uh, like when a baby learns how to walk, they fall. They get back up, brush your knees. That's kind of like what we do, you know, right? Yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to, and of course our pastors, David and Cindy and Darren and Em, yeah. and Jim and Donna. Yeah. I mean, oh, these people have so much in our lives. Uh, just so much, so grateful. So, so grateful for you. Um, okay, anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, so, so awesome, so, so, so awesome. You guys are all so awesome. Uh, before I started, before I start, we start, we're gonna take team today if that's okay with everybody, okay? So it's a little different. It's kind of like, you guys remember WWE or WWF? Snap, take it, take it, and then the other person. So if I get in trouble, that's what's gonna happen. She's gonna jump in. Uh, God is just so awesome, and, and this morning, uh, before I even start on this, uh, I wanted to say men be men, okay? Women be women. Fathers be fathers, mothers be mothers. Be who God has called you to be, okay? There is a purpose, there is a plan, 
and we need to follow that. We need to just let be who we're meant to be, who God has called us to be. Amen. Okay. Today, uh, we're talking, and it, it's like, oh, they're going to talk about marriage. But honestly, it's what God gave us has more to do about him than it does about our marriage. So bear with us, okay? It all comes together. Uh, before we start, I would like to pray and uh, ask God for <laughs> uh, grace, basically. So Father, we do come to you this morning, Lord, our congregation, and, and we pray, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would come in power and strength, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would m continue to move here, Lord God, that uh, you would be high and lifted up, and most important of all, Lord, that our relationship with you would grow in Jesus' name. Yeah. All right. So, let's get down to it. All right. Uh, we, when we were putting together the word, uh, both Mary and I felt like, all right, we're going to have a lot of scripture. We kind of, we, we, we sat together and we, we put together different ideas. And, and uh, if you all would like to follow along, that would be great. Uh, take notes, that would be great. So John 1 through 4, uh, felt that this was very important. God was putting this on my heart. And uh, this is just a standout scripture. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things comprehend all things, right? Say it, all, all things. things, all things. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So that's, that's pretty impactful scripture right there. You're talking about Jesus Christ right there. You're talking about he was with God, and everything was made through him, right? So do you think God, from that standpoint, do you think God really has an idea of how our marriages should work? Yeah. I think he does. Yeah. He knows parts of an Adam that we don't even know yet, <laughs> right? He knows exactly how my beautiful wife was made, and he knows exactly how I was made, and he knows exactly what he wants. We, we have a purpose, okay? All right. John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. So there you have uh, Jesus again, uh, verifying he became flesh. He came down here, he went through, uh, Christina alluded to it, he went through everything we went through, or going through. He, he was here, right? That's amazing. That is awesome. Uh, that shows us that God knows how to give good gifts. Yeah. All right? He gave his very, very best, which is his son, to come here and to walk with us and to help us. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Okay. So here's a question. I felt like uh, Jesus was asking, uh, or God was asking, Father God, how's your relationship with my son Jesus? Ask yourself that question. You know, how is it? Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a prison guard, right? All right? I'm a CO. I work for the state. It's different. Uh, so I wanted to, you know, come in here. When, when you're a guy, you know, they say that we have like, what do we say, a 2,000 word vocabulary, and my wife has like a 7,000 word vocabulary, okay? When, when you're working in prison for as long as I have, my, my vocabulary is like 200 words, right? And actually, there's one favorite, and that's just no. It don't matter, you know, English, Spanish, whatever, no means no, so. Anyway, I wanted to, uh, I have a lot of friends that work at the prison that actually watch the video, which is happening right here. So I wanted to say hi to you guys. You guys are awesome. Um, 
Anyways. All right. Um, how's my relationship with Jesus? How's your relationship with Jesus? How do we look? How do we interact? What do we do? Um, are we with him? Is he with us? Uh, do we get into his word? Do we ask uh, through prayer and uh, our offerings? Do we ask God for what we need? Do we ask God to be successful? All of these things are our relationship with, with God, with Jesus. So, so how are we? God is asking that question today. Um, how are we? So I'm going to backtrack just to uh, make a disclaimer. Everybody always wants to say, well, in marriage, it's, it's, it's this, it's this struggle sometimes, right? And, uh, but it's not. We have to get right with God, right? We, yeah. There's a three strand cord. If, because uh, I've, in the past couple of weeks, people have said, oh, gee whiz, I'm not married. This, this is not applying to me. And I'm like, no, 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 it applies to you. Yeah. Yeah. All right? Because do you desire to be married? Are you going to be married? How's that going to look in the future? Uh, so this is about that relationship. It's, it's major. If you want this to, to work, you've got to have this in order. There's an order to it. You know, and then there are some people who have uh, had difficulties in their marriage, and, you know, we've been sharing that, and we understand, you know, God understands that. But it's that relationship that you have with Jesus. Uh, we're the bride of Christ, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And so, um, yeah, so don't feel like you're left out here because everything applies, this, this whole topic applies to everybody. Yes, yeah. right. it does. Amen. <clears throat> Do you love him with your whole heart and soul? You know, that, that's the, the one of the, that is the main commandment. You know, I think Jesus said that. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Are we doing that? You know, I, I, I can't say I do all the time. And uh, the guys that I work with might be saying, is that the same guy that we work with? Seriously, uh, and that's kind of that's not a good that's not a good testimony, right? Uh, so, do we love him? We've got to love him. Yeah. He's got to be our all in all. He's got to be our everything. He's coming back for a spotless bride. Yeah. Okay, that's that's a marriage. It's called the the marriage feast. You know, the yeah. lamb, right? Yeah. He's coming back for us. We've got to be in his presence he's got we've got to know him and we got to love him uh here's one that uh god hit me with and uh it's this this do you pick up your cross and do you follow him daily or how's that look in your life right do you pick up that cross it's not an easy thing to pick up it's we have to walk through it uh, it's heavy at times right right back here, it, we have to pick that up and we have to walk daily, right? Christ gave up, he died uh, for our sins, but he also died so that we would know and we would walk uprightly. And that's what that means. You know, I can't, uh, uh, and I have, but I shouldn't. Uh, I, I, and there's people I need to go uh, say, I'm sorry for feeling this way towards you, but with your relationship with your wife, you have to, you have to be forgiving. I don't, I don't have that choice. I have to be uh, understanding, compassionate. And that all comes from knowing who Christ is and walking uprightly and carrying that cross. Do you have something to say? Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, so do you all agree with me so far? Yeah. Yeah. So this is where it gets really cool. I mean, I mean, if that's not cool enough, then check your pulse. <laughs> All right? Because <laughs> you might not be around. You might, you know. Uh, this is uh, the next thing that God said. There's a, a progression and there's an order. 
God the Father gave us the Holy Spirit, right? He gave us the Holy Spirit. John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are my branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. And without me, you, can do no, you can't do anything, is what he's saying. You can't do nothing. So we have to be abiding in him. We have to be walking in him. And we have to be pursuing him. Ephesians 1.13 you know, it's really amazing. When I started putting together my notes, I started in nine point. Do you, <laughs> do you guys know what I'm saying? And I've gotten older since I've done this, and I ended up with, like, I don't know, was it that bad? 18 point? Okay, so my notes have grown so I can read them, right? Uh, <laughs> it's terrible, but uh, it's, it's good at the same time. Okay, so Ephesians 1.13. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Wow. So we are all, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. If there's anybody in here that has never accepted the Lord, we'll stop right now. I mean... And you raise your hand, and somebody will come, and they will pray a quick prayer, and we'll move right along. So I don't know if there's anybody like that that needs that, but that's so important. Is there anybody that, that doesn't know that they're sealed, or that wants to be sealed? Okay. All right. Um, was that a hand that went back? Oh, okay. Never mind. I feel like the auctioneer. You know, <laughs> do I hear five dollars? Ten, 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 ten. And then you see something, and you're like, and the person's like, I didn't know. <laughs> Somebody go pray for John. <laughs> All right. So we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay. Uh, another scripture that jumped right out at me was Psalms 51. 10 through 13. Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore me in the joy of salvation, and uphold me with thy spirit. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Can you hear the desperation in there? Can you hear that? That's some that's somebody crying out, God, don't take that whole don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Alright? Do you guys know who that was that said this? David. It was King David. Do you know uh, when he said it? Or when he made the psalm? After Bathsheba. Right, and you know that was a really difficult time for David. Uh, but he realized, I've, I'm, I've erred severely in this thing, and I need God's grace. Please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. There's desperation there. Don't do it. Okay, Ephesians 4.30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed on the day of your redemption. Um, we go through life, we make mistakes, and God doesn't want us to stay in those mistakes. We repent, we move on. But when we go through life and we make a mistake, let's say, and we just keep all. I'm, I feel shame, whatever. You just keep getting a repetitive problem or issue. Now, <laughs> you, you have been sealed. You were sealed by the Holy Spirit. And you're grieving the Holy Spirit. So God's saying today, I, I know. I know. You are my sons. You are my daughters. I know. I know everything. So don't worry about it. Repent and move on. Change your ways. 
it's, it's not a big deal with me, is what God is saying. So, depends on where we're at, right? So, did I tell you guys there was going to be a test today? <laughs> yep. Um, can you guys pass out the uh, test paperwork, please? I'm just kidding. You know what, when, I, when we're doing our in-service training every year, it, we just cringe when they say there's going to be a test. It's like, no! <laughs> but this is a good test, okay? I know Pastor David, has, has, he talks about the love test. Well, today we're going to talk about a test to see where we're at with God and uh, see where we're at and where we're at with each other, okay? So we're going to take a look at uh, the fruit of the Spirit today. So the fruit of the Spirit is found in Galatians 5, 22, uh, and I've got 22 through 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against, 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 excuse me, such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. We live in the Spirit. Let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another to envy. Provoking one another or envying one another. So there's the fruit of the Spirit. If I was walking in those things, my wife would, would love me unconditionally, which she does already, I know. Most of the time, there it is. <laughs> but this is the thing, it wouldn't matter because I would have the fruit of the Spirit. So if she's got the fruit of the Spirit working in her life and I've got the fruit of the Spirit working in my life, God is at work. That's the third string of a three-strand chord, right? Now you're just, you're, you're, you're dialed in, so to speak. So, uh, love, let's talk about love real fast. Joshua 22, 5. But take careful need, heed, I'm sorry, to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God, to walk in all of his ways, to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all of your soul. That's out of Joshua 22.5. So we got to, there again, we got to love. Uh, when we were growing up, you can ask my wife, because she's told me, uh, there was a song, and she's going to be mad that I'm talking about songs. She's like, don't do that, please. <laughs> Okay, but I couldn't help myself because there was a song and it was very influential over our, our, our generation. I want to know what love is. Do you guys remember this song? Everybody probably has heard this song, right? And if you're our age, you, you definitely have heard that song because it was the thing. And it was a good, it was a good song, you know? And it, it really caught you up in that moment of what is love. Um, yeah, it's by Foreigner. There's another song out there in today's world. Uh, it's a country music song, and honestly, I don't know who sings this one. Uh, but the lyrics are, um, I don't know what love is, but I know lo what love ain't. That's a country song. <laughs> Darren likes country music. I just found this out, man. We, we have a common bond. Uh, <laughs> so, where was I going with that one? <laughs> uh, oh, I know where I was going. I know exactly where I was going. Now, I'll tell you guys what. I know what love is. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I saw love yesterday when I saw Bert and Joyce get married. I don't know if you guys were here. If you weren't, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you were here, I saw what love is. So I'm like, wow, that is just so awesome. Two people that are a little older uh, went through tragedy and they're coming out on the other side, listening to God, 
listening to the Holy Spirit and walking in with their next chapter of their life. That is love, right? Amen. So God bless them. I hope they're having a wonderful time on their honeymoon. I'm sure they are. <clears throat> and you know, that song, I want to know what love is. I remember, um, I remember laying on my bed and hearing that song and feeling so lonely and I just wanted to know what love was. I, I felt so lost in a family of seven, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> you know, it's what you kind of feel like. Yeah. But I, I found love right there. Yeah. And then I saw it in this man. And when I look in his eyes, I'm like, oh. I mean, that's, that's you know, in your heart. You know, I, it's, it's God, and that's what love is. It's Jesus. Yeah. And I hope and, and pray that we all will share that with others. Um, joy. Uh, joy, uh, here's a scripture. It's uh, Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. So <clears throat> one thing that um, I, God has done in me uh, through the years is I, I was just had gone through a season of bitterness and I've shared with some of you and you knew it most of you did <laughs> probably but it was just a, a long season of just being bitter and angry and um, God began to show me that that season was because I was just fearful I was just afraid yeah. I just didn't know what to do you know life was being thrown at me and I'm just like what, what do I do with all of this and um, so I began to change my ways. And it wasn't easy, but it was one day at a time. It was just one day at a time. Just do something nice. Say something nice. Don't say, don't call out. Don't be judging, you know, with your mind or your, your, your words. Just do something nice. And I remember Jim and Donna sharing about a, a home group they did once about when, when uh, your spouse comes home, greet them with joy. And so what does joy look like? It's, it's different for everybody. Um, but what we started to do in our home, um, this guy works hard, just like I'm sure every, hus every husband does, and women do too. But there's something about coming to your home and knowing that you have a sanctuary to come to. Yeah. There's something about knowing that you can come to a place where all of the things of the day are not even there. You know that it's a safe environment. Um, so when he comes home, we say, hey, Dad's home, Daddy's home, you know, and hi, how was your day? And that is, we want to give him uh, that kind of atmosphere. And when I come home, I get the same thing. It's, it just spreads. It's just something we do. It's what the Jordans do. And so, and it, it really has changed the atmosphere in our home. And... Uh, and just pointing out, oh, what did you do today? How did it go? And this is what, you know, I don't know if you talked to Joyce, but she recognizes when Marcos uh, answers the door when she comes home, he says, how was your day? How did it go, you know? And it's, it really feels good that people care. And it's not like, oh, you're home. You know, that's, that's not, isn't it true? It's not what we want to pass on. We, we're, we are people of God. This is what we do. When somebody walks in, Doug, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. Praise God that you just walked in the door. God has a plan for you. Yeah. So when somebody walks in, bless them with that because they feel loved and appreciated. Amen. Spread joy in your home. So you, anybody who doesn't know, we had Joyce living with us for about a month. Was it six weeks? Uh, and she just stayed the night and uh, because... Bert and Joyce are serious about doing things right. Yes. Amen. All right, they're just serious about it. Yeah. And Mary said, do you mind? And I said, oh, I don't care. That's, that's great. I never really saw Joyce, but there was a couple nights where she broke curfew. <laughs> Her curfew was like 7.30 and get, she would get in about 7.35 and I, we would look at her and we'd be pointing at our, at our watch. And then she would say, okay, dad, okay, mom, I'm, I'm sorry, I know it won't happen again. <laughs> so 
so that's how it was. We, it's been a real special time. So, uh, who was next? Towards the end, she was really pushing it tonight. Oh yeah. <laughs> You know what? Uh, you could tell how how great they are because she understood totally. You know, this is a time frame we're going to do things, and and you know it worked out great. Yeah. Now in today's world, a, a kid, a modern kid, would be like, "What? Uh, one o'clock? Did you say? No, like more <laughs> like seven or eight, you know." But uh, so you could totally see that it was great. Uh, let's see. We're going to talk about peace next. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. So, peace is very important. Uh, my technical term for my job is called a peace officer. And the, uh, the uh, boss, once in a while, he'll tell us, he'll say, Hey, you're, you're a peace officer, aren't you? Go stop them from doing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we got to keep the peace. We got to, uh, it's really super important to keep the peace, right? Uh, God is so gracious and good that we've worked on that and we've gotten much better at it. Uh, much better. Uh, don't say a, a negative thing, right. you know. Uh, say a positive thing and watch what happens. Right. Don't say the dishes need to be done, guys. Say, hey, uh, I'll go do the dishes for you today. That's really nice. And I know Emily, in her words, she hit on the uh, love languages. Yeah. For a lot of people, uh, acts of service is a big one. Right. Okay? Yeah. So... There are times where I'll, I'll do the dishes and, uh, you know, I'll help out. I'll do whatever needs to happen, the laundry, whatever. We'll just work it out. Yeah, I want to say, you, you're so faithful, too, because, you know, when you have a hard day or you're not feeling good, he, he'll he step in and, and pick up those areas that I'm just like, I'm just spent, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I wish I would do that for you more. I'm not a, I just don't mow lawns. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> we have a 14-year-old boy, so yeah. he's, he's getting used to that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but I will, I'll, you know, we'll, we will team together as a family, and we will help and support. When Dad comes home, you know, let's take off his boots. His feet have been hurting. Let's, yeah. let's get a foot bath for him, and just bring, bring peace in your home. Yeah. 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 Okay, a lot of these it kind of blend in with each other, all the, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, goodness. Um, you know, we have this song, The Goodness of God. Oh, isn't that just the most beautiful song? Um, he is so good to us. And we are, when we are good with each other, when we are good, um, God just, it's like God just being in your home. You know, in your marriage, and um, let's see, learn to reserve your judgments and keep an open mind. You know, learn to to not be judgmental. We live in such a culture of judgment and criticizing. <coughs> learn, teach yourself. I had to teach myself. I still have to teach myself to look at him and go, okay, this, I'm not going to look at him how, uh, uh, based on his past failures. I need to look at him as a redeemed uh, man of God. And, you know, he's asked for forgiveness for all the things he's ever done. You know, God has a future and a hope for him, right. just like he does for you and your spouses, right? right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, being selfless by turning your attention away from yourself and highlighting their qualities. So it's, when he comes home, and I'm like, sometimes I'd be like, oh, this is what I did, this is that, 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 and it's like, uh, let's turn to you. Well, you know, lately, you know, it's so cute. This is part of long suffering. My husband's been wanting a truck forever. 
you know, forever. And um, we finally have gotten some uh, finances that will be coming in. And he's been looking for a truck, and it's so cute. Um, it's just like he's like a little boy in a candy store. He's on the internet. And, um, anyway, um, we don't know what kind of truck it's going to end up being, but. <laughs> There's parts of me that I'm like, he's looking at the computer again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, and it gets, I get frustrated. And I'm like, no, God has blessed this man. He's blessing him. And it's been the cry of my heart that he's blessed. Shouldn't we having, be having a cry of our heart that our spouses get blessed? Yeah. You know, so we, we, as women, we're always looking to want to get our hair did or, and, and our nails and our, you know, it's like, they work so hard for us. They really do. They, they work hard. And we have to recognize that. And anyway, I'm excited for him. And those, those moments that come up, it just make you go, oh, no, here we go. Stop it where it's at. And just, you know, honey, can I get you a cup of iced tea while you're looking at that truck there on the internet, you know? <laughs> she says... Are you serious? You're looking again. I go, you have no idea how complicated diesel trucks are. You have no idea. And I'm going to get a used one. So you just have no idea. These years are good with this manufacturer, but these years aren't. And this manufacturer has a process called bulletproofing. So if I get a truck like that, I have to make sure the engine is bulletproofed. Right? And it's like on and on and on. So that's long suffering. And maybe for a few of you ladies in here, that was long suffering for you right now. I don't know. We haven't even touched long suffering yet. Okay, anyway, let's the, the scripture for goodness we had was he loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. That is in Psalm 33, 5. down to faithfulness and this uh, scripture that popped out of me was in Psalms 40:10. I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly so faith uh, faithfulness being faithful God has given us this house he's given us this marriage, um, he's going to give you that marriage. If you aren't married yet and that's what you want, he's going to give it to you. Um, here's a, a key point. Side note, I was uh, 18 years old and I'm like, I just want to get married. I just knew that's what I wanted to do. And uh, I prayed. I said, God, I just want a wife. And I want her to be about five foot four black, brown hair, long hair. Um, I like darker skin. I, I special ordered her. Okay. About a month later, we're working together. A new, she's a new employee in our store, and, and then we get introduced, and three months later, we're married. That's, that's how our story went. So special order your spouse, if that's what you're after. That's cool. I want... I was going to say something, but Darren, Darren kind of did this, right? I want a curve. Go ahead and special order. God's not afraid of that. It's okay. Tell him what you want, because uh, I tell you, you'll get it, all right? Now it's a Ford. No, no. <laughs> uh, so faithfulness, God is faithful, right? So we just got to remember to be faithful and keep the, the faithfulness uh, within our marriage. Uh, we need to be to each other. We need to be upright. And we need to walk in that uh, faithfulness. Right? Yeah. Just something to add. Yeah, I, I think every, every uh, I, I think probably wives want this more, is longing that your husband is faithful. Um, you know, we know that uh, husbands, <clears throat> and, and even women, 
you know, we're exposed to a tremendous amount of social media. And, um, and I know you at the prison, they have, they have things on their walls and stuff like that. And, you know, and I, I am just... The inmates she's talking about. Yeah, no, yeah, not my... <laughs> make sure to clarify that. <laughs> so, I, you know, I am, you know, as a, a wife, I have prayed since he started working there. We even started a prayer group, and I think some of you girls are here. Praying for our husbands, they're they're having to work in a prison. Oh my gosh, you know, and uh, we want to make sure they're covered. And you know, we still do pray. We pray for our husbands, and you know, uh, we want them to walk, you know, straight to God and not look to the left and to the right. That is the cry of our hearts as women. You guys need to know that. We want our husbands to keep your eyes just on your spouse, and that's it. And the same thing that he wants from me, you know, not to go, you know, honestly, it's really hard not to watch a soap opera and allow your mind to go into a place of fantasy. Right. Women, this is, that's a dangerous place. Yeah. Yeah. When you begin to watch shows that have love affairs and like that, those are dangerous places. Thank you. Amen. And you need to say, I'm turning this thing off yeah. because it will begin to, so a little seed in your mind. Yeah. Women, be very careful. Yeah, right. And um, begin to choose wisely what you put your, your eyes onto and what you put your ear to. Um, can I go on to the next one? The next one is uh, gentleness. Um, God's word says, 1 Timothy 6, 11. And I'm going, I've been going through the amplified version because I feel like it really gives us the guts of everything. Um, but as for you, O man of God, flee from these things. Aim and pursue righteousness, true goodness, moral conformity to the character of God. Godliness, the fear of God, faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. Um, What's that reference for? That, that was 1 Timothy 6.11. Um, being tender and mild-mannered, you know, again, our culture is so violent lately. <laughs> um, you can say you want to blame it on a party, you know, it's, it's them, it's them, it's everyone. Every, it's, it's, it's ugly. But if we have Jesus in our hearts, we can have the mild-manneredness of Jesus Christ. He wasn't mean. He wasn't, he wasn't saying mean things to people. He shared love. And so um, I felt like this one is very important, gentleness. We need to learn to be gentle with each other. And, um, you know, it's so funny. The kids, they, um, even at their older ages, they, you know, they have little spats back and forth, and they're running after each other through the house, and you got to be careful that you don't get in the way. And um, <laughs> But, you know, and sometimes they can be really mean to each other. And I'm like, gosh, where'd that come from? You guys, be nice. Um, but yeah, just encourage, uh, even in, in your, I don't want to say, call them fights, because you know, when you're with your, your, your spouse, don't, we got into a fight last night. Even that is abrasive. Your words are powerful, you know. Don't say it was a fight, say it was a disagreement. Oh, yeah. You know, we got a little disagreement, you know, it got maybe a little bit heated, but even so, let your disagreements be watered down with the Spirit of God. Yeah. And, you know, if it gets really hot, you know, I was just thinking about that fire, water it down. Just say, okay, if you have to, walk away. Yeah. Just say, you know what, right now, I just, let's talk about it a little bit later when we're cooled off. Really important. Don't let, uh, don't go to sleep with that spirit, right. the anger, yeah. you know, sort it out. Uh, we've learned to try to sort it out before we go to sleep because it's so much harder the next day to deal with it for some reason. You know, so don't let the night go down on your anger, you know, uh, confront it, pray about it, work it, work through it and go on. Okay, well, I, I think we're down to the last one and, and I'm sorry, I think we were a little bit out of order. Uh, Self-control is the last one that I have. Uh, whoever has no, no rule over his own spirit is like a broken down city without walls. Okay. That's in uh, Proverbs 25, 28. 
Let that resonate one more time. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Okay? We have to confront and we have to be, we're, we're owners of our spirit. Okay? Um, it, it really is concerning when the youngsters, they don't think they have to take ownership for anything. Okay? Let alone their own actions, their own spirit. But we do. We have to take ownership of those things and run with those things. So I want to, we're going to come to a close on this, but I just wanted to talk to the wives right now. Um, and I'm sharing with the Amplified Bible. Um, with my whole heart. Um, and I know of God's as well. He loves every single one of you. And he cares about where you're at in your marriage or where you're at in your life right now. Um, you can apply this also just to God if you don't have a husband yet. Um, Ephesians 5, 24, and I'm again, Amplified. Wives, be subject to your own husbands as a service to the Lord. It's not, it's not about us. It's not about me. It's not all about me. It's about, it's about him. It's about God. It's as a service to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife. In this culture, women don't feel that way. Women feel like, oh, well, he is not above me. He is not the boss of me. You guys. If we're thinking that way, we're wrong. I'm telling you, God created Adam first. There's a purpose for this order. There is a reason for it. He's, he's you know, oh, but he's, he's mean, he's abusive. Just change, show him how you are with the Lord and let your actions change his heart. I don't have that scripture reference, but God says, let him, let, let, him look at you and see how God has changed your heart and how you can eventually change his. So um, I was once just really quick, I was at an office at a doctor's office and this girl was going to um, do her hair and, and I heard the discussion going on between her and another girl, and she said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut my hair, and I'm gonna do this, this, and this, and something came up, well, what, does your husband want it that way? Does he like that? And she said, I don't care what my husband thinks. And I thought, my heart grieved. Mm. I, because you know what, I care mm. about what my husband thinks. Yeah. I want him to gaze his eyes upon me. Why would I do something that he doesn't like? Right, yeah. <laughs> Why? It just doesn't make any sense. Why would I do something that God doesn't want, right? right? So anyway, I, I don't know why I brought that up, but I just, that broke my heart though, when I heard that. So um, himself being the savior of the body, but as the church is subject to Christ, also wives should be subject to their husbands in everything, respecting both their position as a protector. He's our protector. And if you think that he's not, you're wrong. Ladies, if you think, oh, what's he doing for me? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to give you some correction. He's your protector. He is covering you. He, because you had made a covenant with your husband, God has given him an authority as your protector. So he's your protector. But, but he does this to me. But he, no, he is your protector. Honor him. Have you honored your protector? Do you honor him with your words, with your actions? When he walks in the room, are you, cross, are you crossing your arms? He's your protector. He loves you. Honor your husband. He deserves it. Okay, so he's uh, respecting both the positions as protector and the responsibility of God as head of the house. Again, that was Ephesians 5, 22, 24. Okay, so if you're listening to that and your, your heart is saying, gee whiz, that's, that's, that's kind of, 
I don't like to hear that because the culture doesn't like to really hear that sometimes, right? Yeah. Okay, well, here's the other half of it. <laughs> There's no escape for anybody, okay? So she's, she's hitting on the, fem on, the, on the women, and now it's our turn, my turn to hit on the guys. Because God thought about that, and he said, I'm going to bring balance to this thing. Husbands, love your wives. Seek the highest good for her and surround her with a caring, unselfish, wow, that's a big one for me, love. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify the church, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word of God. That's in Ephesians 5, 25 through 26, Amplified. It's amplified because she likes words. <laughs> right? I, kn I know Daryl Sr. would agree with me because we've had that discussion about amplified. And so, but the point is, is that she's honoring me and I'm loving her with my whole heart, everything that's in me. And we want to make each other happy. We want to make God happy and we want to walk in what God has called us to walk in. Bottom line. So it's not about her doing this. It's not about me doing that. We can go back and forth all day long. It's about what God has for us. Amen. Okay. So at this point, um, we felt uh, a couple things. We'll go ahead and close it, right? Okay. So uh, we felt like, oh, this is awesome. God, God's dealing with us. He's dealing with people. He's dealing with hearts. Um, if you uh, feel a tug on your heart right now, uh, we would ask you, well, first off, the pastors, come on up, the leaders. Um, come on up and get prayer, okay? Um, and I don't care if you're married or not. If you are feeling something where God's tugging on your heart, the Holy Spirit's saying, get right with me in any area, please come forward. And if you are with your spouse and you want to get things worked out, come forward. We have these, uh, I have a few of these binders. Inside these are uh, prayers for, for married couples. Uh, with the Mercanos did put this together in our last group. I have a few of these. This is to start you and launch your marriage until you have time to, to go to the home groups and, and do other things. Okay, so if you want one of these, they're right here. Feel free to grab one for your family. Um, but come on up and get prayer, guys. And if you want to just talk, you know, you feel uncomfortable with prayer, if you want to just talk, um, we, we'll talk with you. And, and we'll, we'll stand with you as well. I want to also remind you um, that we do have that marriage thing that's coming up. Yeah, that, uh, that's coming up tomorrow night. It's a dance thing. Uh, and it's going to be fun right here. And then, because uh, the wedding feast is continuing, right? The wedding feast continues, even though um, uh, Bert and Joyce are out having fun. We're going to continue with this party. And then we're also having the home group. We hope that you'll sign up on your uh, bulletin. Father, we ask you that you come and touch these hearts right now, God. Every single heart, Lord, and that you would do work that you want to be done. Holy Spirit, come and let no heart leave unchanged, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Excellent work. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.